After building the frame, adding RGB lighting, and then getting the lights to sync to games, it's finally time to add the first knobs and buttons to the desk. Oh my goodness. I think the first step is I need to start grabbing all the hardware that's gonna be mounted into it. This is my audio interface. It's got two inputs as well as two outputs. These quarter inch jacks run to my monitor speakers. Having physical knobs for volume is why I love this thing. So it's gonna go into the desk. I also have this mini sub amplifier which powers the bass shakers in my chair. If you missed it, I pulled apart my chair and mounted tactile transducers that vibrate with bass frequencies. And of course there's a physical volume knob, so that's going into the desk. Keep things simple. I'm gonna use this off the shelf macro pad. It's got mechanical switches and a really nice knob that you can program to do pretty much anything on your computer. This will be the final off the shelf product that needs to be added into the desk. And I think the best next step is to shuck the hardware, which is an oyster pearl analogy, meaning we need to pull apart the enclosure to get the electronics from inside. Why is this so hard to pull apart? Whoa! It would not let go. Yeah, so I had these metal tabs. All right. Oh, what? Oh, so I can just use the bottom half. On top of the electronics, I also bought some plugs. Now these are panel mount XLR pass-through, so I can route a mic cable out of the audio interface and back inside of the desk. And now with all of the parts, it's time to design the layout. Without the stock enclosure, I can now see how close each component can fit to one another. And since I'm going to reroute the mic cables like an old school synth, I want those plugs to be off on the side. I think there's like perfect, right? I'm not gonna put my arms there. All right, I'm gonna model up. A super easy hack that I love is to scale a photo to be life size and then measure and place each section to be cut out. After repeating for each component, I now have a design to send to the printer. I just realized that the volume knob is like right in the middle. That's pretty cool. Do you like it? Yeah, 10 out of 10. All right, we've got Bruce's approval. Let's laser cut. Now don't let a lack of tools stop you from completing your projects, as with today's sponsor PCBWay.com, you can simply upload, say, a 3D print file, select a material, color, and quality, and get an instant quote for it to be manufactured and shipped to you. They also have PCB, CNC, and other advanced manufacturing methods to help you with your next project. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Oops. Mate, what? How good is that? That will be the panel. Oh my goodness. This one needs to go maybe up a little bit. Oh, I moved the hole the wrong way. I moved the hole up left instead of down right. Mate, it's been a long day. Oi, 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 oi. All right, I just realized I can laser cut a little cutout that sits on top. If I cut it to just go around it, it'll hold them in place. I was getting a little bit like, is this gonna work out? We're in business. I'm also changing the tactile switches on the macro pad. These have a more mechanical feeling when pressed and will be perfect for media playback controls. I just punched out like a stack and I was like, why does, why are these measurements just not lining up these holes? The paper's moving in the laser cutter. It's so light. The face of this audio interface has a recess section for the main volume knob. And so you'd screw that to mount at the front. I, I can't do that. Yikes. I don't know how I want to mount this. I could 3D print a little, yeah, I might have to 3D print a little bracket that slides in on the side to support the PCB. This will hold it to the front and the bracket can just kind of leverage back and just have a screw up the top corner. I can do that, it's not, it's not a drama. I've never done this before, so like, I, uh, there's no process. My brain's like trying to come up with the correct process. All right, the height's correct. And bring the width in a smidge. Nice, those holes line up well. You having fun? Oh my goodness! You can't get tighter than that, mate. You seriously can't. It's kind of semi-hole, probably. Just look at that. That is flush. Wait till we see the see-through plastic. Why do I feel so tight? Like I was up. I was up a little bit past my bedtime, <laughs> making some little changes, but. Oh, that's very bright. I need you. Deburring tool as you get rid of the edges. Make sure that it's smooth. 
Oh, that does not look right. Yeah, that, uh, I love it. Just a little gotcha. Why not? I put the rectangle on the wrong side. My laser cutter has a blue diode laser, which is perfect for prototyping with wood. However, it's not absorbed by the clear material that the desk is made from. And so I popped into town to get a CO2 laser to cut the panel as it uses infrared light to vaporize transparent material, meaning it's finally time to put all the tech into the desk. What I love about this project the most is adding my personal touch to products I use every day, like changing the labels to match how I use the device. For example, on the Macropad, the record button opens up the software that I use for voiceover recordings on my computer, which you listen to right now. The only thing I don't like is if I plug in wired headphones, the cable now dangles across my desk. So I've got a solution to solder into the circuit board of the audio interface and reroute it to the front of the desk along with the plug for the bass shakers in my chair. And I'm making custom microphone cables to route out and back into the desk like a synthesizer. So that's coming up next as well as a website that I'm gonna be launching for all the files for my projects that you guys have been asking for. So sign up through the link in the description below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.